Hi, everybody. Today on the podcast, I talked to my friend Jessica Clancy, who is the author of this book, The Quest for Family. She has written a very vulnerable and honest story about her life. She's been very truthful. I think, I think everybody needs to read this book because like she and I talk about on here, you know, if you've been through any kind of trauma or abuse or anything, you'll be able to relate to a lot of the issues that she's had. But if you haven't and you are, it, the, the idea of trauma is foreign to you, I think you need to read this book because sometimes we can look at people and wonder why they act the way they do or why they do the things that they do. And we don't have any idea what they've been through or what they're going through at the moment. And so I think this book is a great eye opener. I think it will, like she says in the interview, um, soften the hearts of people, hopefully, as they read. But it's a great book. And she's got a lot of good resources in it as well. So I encourage you to get it and read it. Thanks for listening. Well, first of all, Shara, I want to be formal and I want to thank you for having me on the podcast. Well, thank you for being on my podcast. (laughs) It's fun to meet you and to have this opportunity to do this. So I'm really excited and I value your time. Well, thank Um, you. I know that you... um, you text you uh, linked me on Facebook and I was like, oh my gosh, somebody has my book. I was like so <laughs> excited and trying to figure out the connection because it's just new new for me as well. So right. I'm really right. grateful. So thank you. Yes. I told but, Kristen that I connected with you. She was very happy <laughs> that we were able aw, to talk. So awesome. yeah. Yay. So are so, you getting some good feedback on the book? So so a lot of people that have read it, I have really good feedback um you said it's a big book and I probably I was actually writing to the very end I had three chances to edit it and at some point I was like (laughs) okay like I cannot I have to keep the pages down and the chapters down but I could have kept writing so um yeah well it was very it was very good it was very easy to read um you know it was a lot of it was heartbreaking it's hard to read about other people's hurt. I mean, it is, but you were very vulnerable and very honest about um, your struggles. And in your, I love your uh, handle on social media, Jessica Clancy Perseveres, because you have, you have persevered. And that was one of the things I wanted to ask you was, you know, everybody I think has gone through some sort of trauma. Sometimes it's something small. Sometimes it's a lot. And, and you really had every reason to just say, you know what, I'm done. I, I mean, you had every reason to give up a lot of different times. Why did you keep pressing on? Why did you keep persevering? Um, you're, you're going into the hard stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, though. Um, I think I just had a lot of faith and I knew yeah. that God had more for me. And even though you know, there were lies like, why was I born? Why do I have to exist if this path is so hard? And, you know, when you study the Bible, there's, we all have a path laid out for us and some of it's our fault and some of it isn't. And, you know, I took the challenge on to break that mold and to, to do better and to learn in a, in a sense to not repeat the past. And that kept me going forward. And, sometimes in the darkest times, like I would just run to church. Like I would be at church almost every night, you know, and like praying and people would be, uh, well, people would be praying with me and I'm crying and I felt guilty. I'm like, I'm hogging all their time or, you know, but that was what I needed at that time. And people interceded for me. And I think that really, you know, brought me through. And then it would be like another baby step to achieve, you know, another baby step. And, so, um, you know, to overcome something and then right. it was almost like you get hit with something else and it's like, okay, I'm just getting stronger. So absolutely. And I think people, especially people who have gone through a lot of trauma and a lot of hurt, I mm-hmm. think they will be encouraged in those baby steps because it, for me, it was like cheering you on every time. Okay, good. You know, she got to do this and okay, good. We got past this, you know, um, there were two moments in the book when I, really was excited for you because I felt just by reading and you describing what you were feeling, it was when you got your first apartment. I mean, it's like, I was just so excited. Like she did it. She's, 
she's on her own. And, you know, that was exciting to me. And then also when you were proposed to both of those times, it was like, you could feel the breakthrough in your life. And, and I think people will cheer for you when they get to those points. They're very pivotal moments. I feel like they, I'm, I still look back and you can probably tell in the, in the context that I wrote, um, I still have the same feelings, the same good feelings, you know, of like being in control of my own life for the first time, as in when I got right. my first apartment and yeah. actually finally feeling like I was in a safe place. And, yeah. you know, like I put in the book, nobody comes through that door that I say can't come through that door. So exactly. my boundaries were, you know, exactly. that door, you know, blocked what, what I could control, what could come in and how I was treated at that point. So, and I was in a good, a great job that really um, lifted us up, encouraged us and taught us confidence and taught us how to be professional and to work with people. And, you know, when I was cutting hair, of course. So, Um, and then the marriage part was amazing because um, finally getting away from the relationship that I mentioned, um, even up to the end, there was still like five years, five years into that, there was still tracks, right? Right. And my husband, uh, or when we were dating, it it was kind of funny, because we were in Bible study. And I'm like, told my best friend, hey, girl, there's this guy there, and you probably really like him. (laughs) I had no intention of like, dating him or marrying him. He was kind of, you know, I thought he was he was younger than me. And when I looked at him, I looked at like my clients. I mean, they're eight years old on a little, you know, stool and I'm cutting right. their hair. And they're like, you blink and they're 20 years old. And he was yeah. eight years younger than me. And I'm like, I can't marry you. You know, it's so <laughs> weird. But I mean, <laughs> once that happened, um, just, it was just like that wall of whatever it was just broke. Like, I mean, I had my in-laws gave us like a rehearsal like dinner for people who attended the wedding and we had a perfect wedding on a cruise ship and we bought our first like everything and I passed my RD license I'd been studying for for like four years oh wow I mean, everything it was like the barrier was gone and just the Red Sea parted <laughs> you know yes. it was just amazing so yeah I was very very thankful and yes. I always say like what God God will take the old and the bad and turn it into the new and the good. So it's kind of like my little catchphrase, but yes. Um, One of the things that you talked about is um, the women who showed you kindness growing up that you were not getting, you know, you weren't getting it at home, but can you talk a little bit about some of those people? Um, Well, there was two families specifically that I have known since I was 13 years old. Before that, it was probably like a shadow. It it was more the acts of service that I remembered Uh and, you know, the escape from the home, um, like Mm -hmm. baking cookies or um, there was even like a neighbor that like took me to a movie or um, just different things that would be normal incidences for a lot of kids um, that I didn't have, right? But those two families that I met when I started babysitting their kids, yes, I mean, they, to this day, like I can call on them and, um, you know, depend on them, give them, they give me advice and, um, they're there for me. And like, I'm so grateful for them. Um, my grandmother's passed away and like, if I need some advice, like I just call them and they're like mom and dad and yeah, they're just all family. Yes, I see them at the holidays. I wish I saw them more often, but once you have kids and then their kids have kids and they're in California. And so, you know, your relationships change, but that doesn't mean it changes how I feel or how they feel about us. It's like they evolve. And when you need them the most, those people are there at the right time. And yeah, yeah, I know you're in Texas now, but I don't remember at the beginning of the book where grew up I know you came to Texas at a certain point but where were you in California before in the beginning I don't remember so I was actually born in Dallas Texas um I was conceived in Magnolia Texas (laughs) when you read the book you'll understand that yeah um my mom had gotten married and apparently we lived in around the the spring Houston area okay but she left that husband which took her to Germany so okay. we went to Germany, Maine, and Bermuda with that husband, okay. who was a uh, very violent and yeah. um, you can, he's called mean man in the book. So, <laughs> um, 
And then my mom left that relationship. So we came to live with my grandparents in the Midwest, Kansas. Mm -hmm. And then she wanted to go back to Bermuda on her Mm -hmm. own. So we went back to Bermuda and she met her husband, her third husband that was in the Navy. So that was kind of. I, I knew there was a lot of moving around, but I could not remember a lot. The beginning. A lot of moving around. A lot. So by the time I was six, I think I said I had lived in three countries, um, multiple states, multiple homes. Yeah. I had it counted out on paper once, but. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> and multiple dads. And multiple <laughs> dads. Too. I appreciated your um, list of characters. <laughs> in the book because it was a lot of people I'm like oh good you can kind of go back and remember who's who yes. you know because it was a lot of a lot of different characters in the book yes. and they're not yes. characters but you know what I mean and kind of a funny story to that I am terrible at names yes but I can tell you everything from my childhood like from right. when I was two and older so it's I had to make the list for myself and I right. mixed them up several times and I had a friend that um, that I do mention in the book who came uh-huh. beside me as kind of like a mentor as well. And she was so excited about my book and reading it with me as I was kind of like changing it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm running out of pages. I think I need to take out the list of characters. Well, she revised it for me. Oh. And corrected it. And she's like, no girl, you got to keep that in there. Yeah, yes. It was very helpful <laughs> to have that in there. It was kind of funny. So I loved also your letter of forgiveness in the end, because I was thinking about how, you know, we, I said a lot of people have been through trauma, some little, some a lot, and some people maybe want to forgive, but they don't even know where to begin. They don't even know how to do it or what to say. And so I thought that was extremely helpful. And I'm sure that's going to help a lot of people just, just know how to pray anything just to read the words. And then, you know, they'll be able to do that. So I'm glad you put that in there. Thank you. That was Um, very good. So that was part of my journey, learning how to forgive my mom. And I really think that a lot of the blessings that happened when I met my husband was because I was going through that process of healing and forgiving and letting go. And um, what I found was you don't have to forgive and forget. And a lot of people hold on because they think if they forget that that person gets away with something, with hurting that person, with hurting me, right? But it's not about that. Like you, you can remember, you just don't remember the pain you remember in a sense to protect yourself with new boundaries. And a lot of people that experience trauma or hurt don't know, like a lot of things I did as a kid, like I didn't know, I didn't have anybody who role modeled what, how to act or how to, you know, carry myself or how to defend myself, how to have boundaries. So you learn that as you get older and you get enough confidence to say, it's okay to say, no, it's okay. It's okay to forgive. I'm not going to forget, but I forgive you. I don't harbor the pain. I don't harbor harbor bitterness. I'm going to go live my life, but you know, whatever that boundary needs to be, you need to establish that to protect yourself and your family, your kids and your livelihood. And the latter was something that my counselor and I were um, talking and she was like, how are you going to end your book? And I was like, well, you know, I'm talking about all these things that happened in my life. And I, you know, I'd already forgiven people, but I I never wrote a letter. And I was like, yeah, I do want to write something to the act of like forgiveness and letting go um, for other people to mirror that. And she was like, girl, I have this forgiveness letter and I've been wanting to write a book with it. And I said, can I use it? That's awesome. (laughs) she, she gave me the right. So I felt that a lot of people may not know how to put it into words, yes. you know, it's all in their head yes. So to see somebody's examples of how, yes. and that could have been a book on itself too, but you know, right. <laughs> right. But, um, but yeah, just trying to be specific on thinking about the things that you, they hurt you with and then releasing right. that. Yeah, so, because not way. everybody gets to go through counseling. Not everybody's going to have a therapist or somebody to help them through right. that. And right. so, um, and I think everybody needs to read your book because, I mean, especially people that have been through trauma and have been through hard things, I think it would be good to see, okay, I'm not the only person, you know, this is also, they also have to do with this, but also people that have never been through anything or don't know. There, there are people, I believe in this world that don't know trauma, <laughs> that mm-hmm. don't know anything, you know, it's, it's foreign to them. 
yes. I think it's an eye opener. And I think we need to learn about other people and learn about, wow, this is what's going on. I mean, sometimes it's a shock. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's very much a shock. So I think everybody, I think everybody needs to read it. I, I agree with you on both ends because yeah. even marrying my husband and I, you know, I say a joke, you probably heard the joke or read it, um, that he was conceived in the same house that he left to marry me. Yes. <laughs> which is true. So here I am like living all right. across the country and the world and here yeah. he is in the same house and he was very sheltered and didn't experience the level of trauma. And that mm -hmm. impacts our marriage too, in a lot of ways that we've had to work through and helping him find more empathy and understanding and not right. taking things personal. Um, and, you know, yes, I did want to reach out to people and let people know who do experience trauma to not to be able to call it out, to identify it because yeah. they, maybe that's all they knew and they didn't right. realize that that wasn't normal. Mm -hmm. um, but also to let them know they're not alone and to find their own voice so they can find their own forgiveness and healing. Yeah. Um, and also just for if people that don't experience that could, could, like you said, like just see into the aspect of other people, like have more understanding. There's a lot of people that are angry or hurt that aren't yeah. dealing with that and it comes out in, you know, maybe in traffic or different ways, right. And, right. you know, we, we don't have to grab that and take it personal. So right. you just never know, you never know what somebody else is going through. Mm -hmm. Um, ha do you, do you still have a relationship with your mom? Are you able to, I do not, I do not No. There was a point when I was, um, a, around the time of Europe, when we mm -hmm. contacted, and yeah. then after that, she had said some harm, uh, very hurtful things when, mm -hmm. um, you know, when I was like out of like going to college and, um, yeah. yeah, I just realized that if I ever had my own family, I couldn't trust her. Yeah. And mm, I don't know how much I should say right now, but don't say any more than you need to. I just I wonder, it'll be in another wonder. book someday. Probably. There you go. <laughs> There what you. happened to mom? Right. So, but yeah, she's, yeah. So we haven't talked in probably like 23 years. So. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. And I, and keep in mind, I left her when I was 13. So yes. yeah, I've had more life without a mom than with a mom. <laughs> wow. So it makes even those women who have mentored you and taken you under their wing even more special. Yes, absolutely. Them. Yeah. That's, that's really good. So what are you doing now? <laughs> I am a, di a dietitian. I work with dialysis patients. So I was able to work my way through college as a cosmetologist and I work in two dialysis clinics. Um, so I help patients learn how to eat better to prevent um, more consequences and side effects of the dialysis disease to help them live yeah. longer, healthier lives. So, awesome. but I love it. I get to help them and make a difference. And yes, yeah. I'm glad that you're enjoying that. I, I, you worked very hard. You talked mm -hmm. about it in the book, um, getting through school and all the testing and all the stuff you had to do. So I'm glad Thank you're you. enjoying doing that. Thank um, you. we, we do have one thing in common. We actually, we have a lot in common, but <laughs> we have one thing in common that I was so happy to read about, and I'm going to totally nerd out on this, but our love for Amy Grant music. Oh my gosh. I love so Amy Grant. When I <laughs> was awesome. a kid, I had my first album was Amy Grant age to age. Like that was mm -hmm. my first. And then after our cassette tapes came out, I bought the cassette tape and I've listened to her for years. And it, it was like, it was a safe place for me. I mean, that music was like, I don't know. I could, I could just be me. It was just me loved it. I've always loved it. And when you started talking about the music in your book, I got so excited and I went and, <laughs> and I'll listen to her occasionally now, but I went and downloaded another one of her CDs and I forgot about the song. All I ever have to be. I forgot about that song when I downloaded the CD or, you know, we have Apple music. I downloaded the song. I knew every word. I remembered every word from singing it as a kid. Mm -hmm. I love that song. I love the words of that song. And especially my father, now, it is so special. It, my father's eyes. Sorry for interrupting. All I ever the, have to be is what you made me. Yes, that one. Mm -hmm. um, I just love that song. I play it now almost every day because I love her. A couple of years ago, two or three years ago, 
she came to Dallas and um, Aaron took me for my birth. It was in October, but he got tickets for my birthday. And I said, because I saw her as a teenager and, you know, I was on the very back top of the auditorium and she was this big on the stage, her and Michael W. Smith. And I said, I want to go, but I only want to go if I can see her face from my seat. Like I want to sit on the front row. And so we got tickets on the second row. Which wow. Was, it was very, it was at the Majestic <laughs> in Dallas. It was very close. And I could, I've got lots of video and pictures and I mean, I could see her face from my seat and <laughs> it was just so special to me. I don't know that my husband loved it as much as I did, <laughs> but it was so wonderful because I adore her music. It was just so special to me all those years ago. And so I was very happy when I read that, that you loved it as much as I did. And, and that was really um, a blessing right? Because I had a friend from school and, you know, God spoke to her heart and she gave me the cassettes of the music. I don't even know all the names of the cassettes, but I know some of those songs, like I just really like, you know, you have to change your mindset, right? Mm -hmm. And so even as a little girl, like I would hang on to those lyrics to, yes. to take me away, you know? Yes. And even as an, a, like a prayer, even as a child, like I didn't even know, but it's like a prayer, like that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's all that matters, you know, just yeah. like father's eyes. I want God to see my father's eyes through me, you know, right. and all I have to be is what you made me, not what she thinks I need to be or what right. she's trying to make me into, you know, yeah. so I, I think her music was, and even um, in the darkest part of my book, like her music brought like safety, you know? Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, it was like a safe place for yeah. me. I just loved it. I loved yes. it. I just yeah. got recently got a record player. And so now I'm out on the hunt oh. for that, <laughs> that album. Because <laughs> I want to get That's awesome. <laughs> I records are good <laughs> they are they are but your love for the castle where did your love for the castle come from so with the castle um I really felt connected to castles and you you can read about that like when I mm -hmm. traveled in Europe I tried to always tour the different castles and yeah. when I was writing my book I just kept envisioning a castle in my head and mm -hmm. so I went to my and I had just contacted my publishing company and I said is there any way that we could put a castle um, on the book cover and like impose it on there with my family or, you know, how could we make that happen? And she said, well, you have to find, you know, a picture and then pay for the rights. And I'm like, that sounds really complicated, you know, right. and it wouldn't even be that sentimental. So, yeah. and I was like, well, maybe I have a picture of a castle for my travels. And I'm thinking all these ideas. So I go to my hairdresser like that night or the next night. And he was like, yeah, there's a castle in Texas. I'm like, how did I meet all the places? I didn't know this. I grew up in Texas and I had no idea. All the places I've been and traveled to. So he was like, yeah, it's the Newman Castle. So I called up Mike Newman and I was like, hey, I'm writing a book and I'd really like to put a castle on the cover. He's like, okay. And I'm like, can I come out and take pictures? Within a week, we had all the, wow. like, he set up a photographer, the photographer like shut down. I never even met the owner until my book signing day. He came wow. and he granted me the rights to use it. And so it was just totally like a God thing. It was, yeah. it was something that was burning inside. And, and at that time, I didn't even really have the name of my book either. So yeah. that's kind of a funny story, but. So it all just came together like very quickly, you know, that part of it, which is pretty yeah. amazing. So, so yeah, that's how I got the castle. It's very cool. And I, I really didn't know there was a castle in Texas. <laughs> I didn't I either. No I didn't either. And the other thing was I wanted to stage the book, like the Renaissance period. I wanted, because I knew there were three parts to the book. So I started mm -hmm. thinking about like the theme, probably stuff I'd studied in school and was captivated. I love history and traveling and learning about the past, you know, to yeah. change things. Right. Um, I know you just did a podcast on understanding the past to move forward and yes. recognize your, your growth. Um, but I wanted to use the castle theme, like the Renaissance. So a, every little girl wants to find her princess, you know, and even when I got engaged or got married, like I never dreamed I never dreamed of like a wedding, like even like that, you know? Yeah. Um, so, um, so the dark ages, you know, subject to the will of others, getting past the past, that's the battle in the castle, right? right? As the girl's on a quest to find her prince and then coming into her own self-actualization and renewal and enlightenment and 
Um, and then meeting, finally meeting her prince, the redemption, you know, where right. God renewed everything. So, so I really like the castle theme because how can you take everybody, a lot of people for years have been writing about dysfunction and, you yeah. know, talking about things, but how could I put a different spin on it um, to, yeah, just to frame it differently and speak to people. So. And you did. I mean, it, I think your title is perfect because that's what you were searching for your whole life was family. I mean, yes. and that is, that is in an, an innate desire. I think in every single one of us is mm -hmm. to have that family, people that will look out for us and protect us and love us and, you know, that we can do the same thing for. And so I think your title is perfect. And I hope so, kind of going back to what you mentioned before, you know, a lot of people may not understand the trauma, but I hope that it will soften people's hearts and help yes. them be more aware to people around them and to give that helping hand either to the neighbor, to the kid, like, like you said earlier, you don't know what people are going through and how mm. acts of kindness can change their life, you know? Yeah. So I had a job, um, several years ago and it was at a school and I, there was a lot of things I loved about it, but I was not as healthy as I am right now. And I, after reading your story, I think, man, I wish I had been more focused on the kids and other people rather than my own issues and getting frustrated with things that really don't matter because I, there were so many kids that were going through junk. I mean, a lot of stuff. <clears throat> and when I would learn about it, it definitely changed my perspective and it changed my attitude, but it just made me wish I'm thinking, you know, I got so frustrated at things that just don't matter. And I wish I had spent a little more time. So I hope, like you said, I hope people's hearts are softened to the people around them because you don't know what other people are going through. You know, you, you just don't have any idea. So, and, and even though your world may not have been seemingly normal, you have no idea the kids watching you. That's probably right. a bet like a normal for them. That's not a normal they see at home. So don't, you know, give heart to think that you didn't make an impact. I'm sure that in some degree, there were kids that were watching you and modeling you yeah. and that you influenced in a positive way. Um, I hope so. I just, <laughs> it makes me think more now when I'm, mm -hmm. when I see kids and I, and I remember, I'm like, there's no telling what, you know, what they're dealing with. So, well, I'm very glad I read your book and I recommend it to everybody and I will keep recommending it because I do, I think it's a Thank great you. book. It's, it's, um, it's just good for people to read. They need to be aware. Thank and, you. Um, so are you going to be traveling, doing any book signings or and I have two yeah. book signings. I have one in Waller and I have, okay. uh, that is actually this Saturday. Yeah. And I have one in downtown Houston, the end okay. of August. And I actually may be able to participate in a women's conference. So awesome. We talked about this. Excited. That's awesome. And actually I almost called you because it was like the next day when oh, I found insane. out after we were talking about that. So where is, is it yeah. in Houston or, um, the, the time and place is to be decided, but it's okay. in the works and there's an organizer and, so awesome. I know I can tell you more details offline, but sure. yeah, so just kind of funny how God works. Like he plants seeds and nudges yes. you and then makes open door, makes things happen. So that's amazing. Well, yeah. I'm very excited for you. Very excited. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, thank you again so much. I think my time's about to run out. Okay. Um, but thank you so much for talking to me. Oh, uh, thank you so much for talking to me and Maybe we'll do a conference or something else together sometime. Sure. So. For real, that would be awesome. <laughs> Learn and grow together. Yes, absolutely. Well, you have a wonderful evening. You too. Have a good okay. evening. Thank okay. you. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye-bye.